Why don't you guys spread on down the stage? It looks pretty crowded over there. Um, I'm going to talk for about five minutes, and then we'll answer uh, do, uh, some question and answer. And then we're going to get to lunch. So, why did you come here today? I'm not looking for an answer. That's a rhetorical question. If I were in your shoes, the reason I would have come was so that I could leave here with some strategies. So that tomorrow there would be things I know that I didn't know yesterday. And so, what's that noise? Uh, um, and so that's what I'm going to challenge you to do, is tomorrow morning when you get up, whatever you're, whatever you're doing, going for a walk, eating breakfast, I want you to recite five strategies, five things that you took away from today that will make you more employable into your future. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you some successful strategies. And the number one successful strategy is write it down. Get yourself an engineering logbook. I have an engineering logbook and a wife who sews really well, so she makes me cool covers for my engineering logbooks. Carry one with you, always. It's a way to communicate, and what you're communicating is you're communicating to the other people around you when they're talking that what they're saying is important, that you are listening to them. And so when you get into the workforce, whether it's on vacation work or starting your first job, have an engineering logbook, carry it with you wherever you go, and write down the things that you're hearing. I have already filled up five pages this morning of useful information. Number two strategy is something called the rule of one over X. This is a hugely important strategy for teamwork and communication. Um, X, you know, we're, we're mathematician type people. We can talk in terms of algebra. I look at table nine there and I see four people. One over four. That means if at that table, when they have conversation, each person should speak one-fourth of the time. Some of us talk too much and dominate the table. Some of us don't talk enough and aren't meeting our responsibility. We all have to calibrate ourselves. If I'm the person that talks too much, I have to be self-aware, heard those words somewhere today, and know how people are responding to me if I'm not talking enough the same. So the rule of one over X, it's also a great inclusivity tool. Next, show up early, leave late. If you have an, a, your new position, your vacation work, your new graduate position, get there 10 minutes beforehand. Leave 10 minutes after. Don't, don't be a person who punches the clock. It communicates great things when people see you there just a little bit before and a little bit after. Next is something called the rule of right angles. Um, right now, if I look at any of our tables out there, they look like they're a mess. And if you let the stuff on your desk when you leave every night or during the day look like that, you're communicating, I'm a slob, I'm disorganized, I couldn't manage my way out of a wet paper bag. But at the end of the day, when you've got that extra 10 minutes, take everything on your table and just orient it so that it's perpendicular to the table. And all of a sudden you're communicating, I'm the most organized person in this company. Um, dress appropriately, whatever the appropriate dress is, this is part of being self-aware. Know what it, the expectations are at your company and, and live up to them. Answer emails within 24 hours and voicemails. In a day, uh, as a professional engineer, I probably receive 200 emails. And if I don't answer them, I fall behind. And now I'm not being responsive. And some people think that's OK. It's not. Be responsive. Answer your emails within 24 hours. And the last one of uh, the successes for engineering work are to be reflective. To take time to, uh, I, I, in, Anne was talking this morning uh, about an engineer who every morning wrote down what was learned yesterday or what the takeaways were from yesterday. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Reflection is one of the most important attributes we can have. I happen to do mine in that extra 10 minutes at night. Work gets done at 4 o'clock. I sit down at my table. I rearrange everything by the right of rule, rule of right angles. I take out my logbook, and I write down my five takeaways from the day at that time. All right, so those are some strategies for success during work. Now, how about 
getting work. Because that's what most of you are interested in. I want to get hired. So, number one, start living the things that I just said today. Don't wait until after college and into the workforce to start living our values and start living responsibly. Start doing that now. Number two, be able to tell the stories of these things. When people go out to get interviewed by a company, the company already expects that if you have your bachelor's or master's in engineering, that you are a technical person. They expect every engineer they hire is going to be a technical person. So if you want to differentiate yourself, you need to show them how you will add value to their company beyond the technical. And so when you can tell stories like, I have an engineering journal, I carry it with me wherever I go, and at the end of every day I write down reflections on what I took away from that day. If you said that in an, inter in an interview, most engineers are on the table, their jaw would hit the table because they don't expect that level of uh, sophistication from new graduates. And when you can show that level of sophistication, you are now being impressive and companies are looking for that. And the way to do this is to practice telling these stories. It's not good enough to, to live our values, but we have to practice telling them to ourselves so that we can practice telling them in interviews. It's basically a, a practicing. If you can explain something to yourself, then you can explain it to somebody else. And if you don't practice that verbalization, it becomes very, very difficult. It's something we call tacit. It's there, I have this strength, but I can't communicate it to you. When I practice it, I can communicate it to you. All right, that is it. Um, other than, don't forget, tomorrow morning, as part of your reflection, tell somebody about the, tell yourself and then somebody else about the five strategies that you took away from this day. Okay, so now we're going to entertain questions for any of our panelists. You have to raise your hand. Oh, one more strategy. Whenever you're at work, whenever you go to a symposium for your work, there's a responsibility that you ask a question. Whenever you're in an audience, you have to be thinking to yourself, rule of one over X, I need to be coming up with the question. So live up to your responsibility. What's your question? And who are you going to ask it to? So I've been teaching for almost 30 years, and when it gets uncomfortable like this, I just start pointing at people and make them ask questions. I thought you had a question. Yes, okay, here we go. And who are you asking your question of? Is that working? Yeah, I'd like to ask both you and, is it Narelle Palmer, uh, about mentoring? And I guess both sides of it, as in going into the workforce, what you look for in mentoring, and going further into the workforce, what you look for in mentoring. Go ahead. Okay, that's to me. Um, from the point of view of going into a, into a workplace, um, one of the programs you're going to hear from today is our Career Centre who have got the Career Mentor Link program, which is really important about getting linked with someone working in your industry. It's really important if you can get aligned with someone who um, has been in your shoes. So they know how you're feeling, they understand about networks, they can almost show you the shortcuts, which is a little bit what is like being a mentor to undergraduate or postgraduate students. It's showing them, um, the way I sort of say to my mentors is, think about something that you wish you'd known when you first came to either an organisation or to uni. That's a shortcut. Showing them, rather than doing it this way, this is how I felt, this is what I did to address it. In an industry perspective, you're going to be considered to be quite green when you start and you have to remember that all of those people there started exactly like you but it is important about asking questions you will learn if you ask questions um, you will find that most of the people you may be actually uh, linked with a mentor when you start they may do that in the organization they want to give to you but if you don't ask they can't give it to you so often people have a lot of information they want to share but it's about you asking. The same as we say to our mentees, ask your mentor. They're a wealth of knowledge. Um, no question is too silly either. Don't ever be frightened to ask a question because you'll often find 
maybe what you've asked today is what most of the people in the room here weren't thinking exactly the same thing, but you've had the courage to speak up. So that's another thing to think about as well. Um, I would definitely consider the Career Mentor Link program if you haven't already done it. It's not too late to do it if you're still, you know, even if it's really good to get those connections. And then we've already got people in those industries that are really keen to help you, to give you some of the pointers about what you should be doing to make you stand out to all the other applicants. So I don't know if that's helped to answer your question. A real quick answer that I would have is to not worry about the, the, the titles of mentor. When you get into the workforce, look around, find the people you respect, and when you have a question, ask them. And after a while, you'll realize who your mentors are. Rather than going in on the front and saying, who's gonna be my mentor, will you be my mentor? Don't do it like that. Come up with your real genuine questions, find people who you genuinely respect, and ask them the questions. Any other questions? We have time for one or two more. Yes, uh, Sally, get the hand of Michael. Um, my question was for Harrison. Uh, I wanted to know more about Bass Club and how you got involved with it and what exactly it was. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a chance occurrence, really. So one of the, the, the thesis supervisor that runs the, the team, he gave a very brief presentation at one of his lectures. He only did one for that semester, and so I went and talked to him after the, the lecture, and I said, I really like what you're doing. How can I get involved? And then from there, he kind of said, Well, usually you do PhDs in this area, but if you want to help out, you're more than welcome to you know, come onto the team and work from there. So essentially, it was kind of a, a bit of a luck situation. So that's kind of the whole 